Good evening. I apologize for the break in between videos. I've moved myself and about half of my stuff from Hungary back to Ireland. So I've had a very busy week. So instead of doing all the individual videos and uh, uploading them all at the same time, I'm just going to do the weekly summary for this week. So it wasn't too bad. There was 33 dividend payments for a total of one euro and 87 cents. And I did the video for Monday. That was 10 dividend payments. Tuesday, there was 16 dividend payments for a total of one euro and 16 cents. Wednesday, there was three payments for a total of six cents. Thursday, three payments for a total of 11 cents. And Friday, there was one payment for a total of three cent. There was also a spin-off. IBM had a spin-off, which is called Kindrel Holdings. I'll uh, bring the picture up now in a second. That was on Friday, the 5th. And on Wednesday, Realty Income, very popular monthly paying dividend stock. It absorbed or acquired Ferrate, which was another real estate investment trust that I had stock in. So Verate is now gone and is part of Realty Income. That was Wednesday, the 3rd. So three companies paid a lower dividend than the previous one, and that was Anna Lee Capital, ticker symbol NLY, Shaw Communications, ticker symbol SJR, and Toronto Dominion, ticker symbol TD. There was one property income from Edison Properties, ticker symbol EPIC. There was one bonus dividend. That was from Industria de Decino Textil, ticker symbol ITX. And three companies paid a higher dividend than the previous one. That was Gladstone Investment, ticker symbol GAIN, JP Morgan, ticker symbol JPM, and Verizon, ticker symbol VZ. The spin-off was IBM creating Kindrel Holdings. So a spin-off for anyone who's never seen one before is basically when it's decided that a single entity, which in this case was International Business Machines Corporation or IBM, it's when it's decided that two separate entities would be more profitable than the current single entity. So Kindrel Holdings is now basically going off to do its own thing. It's been demerged or spun off from IBM. So IBM completed its spin-off resulting in the distribution of Kindrel Holdings shares with the ratio of two Kindrel, share, two Kindrel shares per every 10 IBM shares. And that was the ones that were held at the end of the 3rd of November of 2021. So I got 0 0.00339 Kindrel Holdings. And it's about 7 cent. So I'm going to add a couple of euro into there just to bump it up. 7 cent is a worthless position. <laughs> Even for my 1 euro standards. And that was on Friday, the 5th of November. It was also the acquisition. That was on Wednesday the 3rd. Realty Income, whose ticker symbol is O, has absorbed Verate. Ticker symbol was V-E-R. So as an investor, you are probably aware that Verate has been acquired by Realty Income. Based on the ratio of 0 0.705 Realty Income shares for every one Verate share is held, you're due to a distribution of Realty Income Corporation, and as a result, 0 0.04428 Realty Income shares have been allocated to your account. So my position in Realty Income is slightly bigger, and my position in Verate is now gone. Verate itself is now gone from my portfolio. On the plus side, I'm going to be start working this week, I think Tuesday. So I will have a lot more money to invest and to get the snowball rolling even faster. But at the moment, I had 50 euro that I could invest. So I spread it out across all of my 43 monthly paying stocks. 
And I also had another 50 euro to invest individually across a lot of different companies. And how I picked them out was going through the smallest positions and the positions that were in the red. And because I did this when the market is closed, we should still be able to see the list of where they were. Yeah, so a lot of these ones, because they were down so low, but also when I organized it according to market value, there's Kindrel holding seven cent. <laughs> I also put, I think I doubled as many of these positions as I could. I put one euro into each one for now. But quite a lot of them. It's spread out across 50 of them. So there should be quite a few gaps filled in pretty soon. I also came across this when trying to bulk up my Swedish match position. Ticker symbol SWMAY. And it says trading with the instrument has been limited to close only due to the amendments to the Exchange Act Rule 15C2-11. And what that basically means is that market makers, they have to have a reasonable basis for believing that the information is accurate and from reliable sources. So I think what that means is that they can't trust the information that they're being given at the moment or they're unsure that it's accurate. That's about the best uh, I can do for now. I've never seen this one before. But I'll look into it. And last but not least, these are the leaderboards of how the week ended. So as of Friday, market close. Devon Energy is still number one, but it's up 62% now. Very nice. Vermilion Energy is number two. Number three is Blackstone. Number four is a new one. Reifheisen Bank. Number five is now Albemarle. Number six is Novo Nordisk. Number seven, Rolls-Royce, climbing back up through the ranks. Number eight is Innovative Industrial Properties. Number nine is Suncor Energy. And number 10 is now KLA. And the worst of the worst, the very worst is still Adler Group. It's down 36.5%. Second worst, Zagona Communications, and my orders have still not gone in. So it's important to know that because Zagona Communications is having such a downturn, I think it seems to be quite illiquid. And I'm struggling to get money in, but it's important to visualize for yourself. Imagine trying to get money out while it's crashing. This is the reality of it for a lot of it, unfortunately. Third from the bottom, Logitech International. And there is two of them. This ticker symbol is L-O-G-I. Number four is now Alstom. Number five is Itau Unibanco. Number six is Great Elm Group. Seventh from the bottom is Rubus. Eighth from the bottom is Q and Etty Q Group. Number nine from the bottom is Pinnacle West Capital. And number 10 from the bottom is UTZ Brands. So that's all for this week. And I apologize for the lack of detail. If anyone is looking forward to the individual breakdowns, I just had a very busy week. It was a huge change. But things are now settling in here and I'm going to get myself set up and hopefully get a microphone quite soon so the audio quality should be greatly improved well that's all for this one and I'll see you tomorrow when the market opens